Welcome to the Call of Duty News Channel. My name, of course, is Ayo Lipstar, but let's get right into the news. Listen, everyone, we got some crazy news that we have to cover over the last couple of weeks within the Call of Duty community, man. A lot of stuff happened, okay? But the first thing that we're going to talk about, the first story of the day is the fact that Call of Duty and Activision are now being exposed for having dark patterns within the game. A YouTuber named Less Thought Of made a video going over Call of Duty and Activision's dark patterns within the games, and he basically goes over how they make you do things without you even noticing. He had a lot of talk about, but I think for you guys, it's a really good video to watch, but I want to show you guys my favorite parts from the video. And that's not the issue. The issue is the effect on the sandbox. Yes. And the very delayed damage control. It's not every kit or weapon, but I find that most of these guns rip and tear no overly saturated thumbnail needed. Some standouts were the BP. <laughs> I, I couldn't hold in my laughter, man. <laughs> it's, it's a clickbait new meta thumbnail, man. <laughs> but yeah, he is right there. Like, I'm not going to lie. These weapons come out busted. And then the fact that. When you watch your favorite Call of Duty YouTuber and are talking about the new meta, it just creates that fear factor of missing out and you having to play the game, you know, for hours just to unlock it. And then by the time you could enjoy it for about a week or two, it's gone and nerfed. This situation right here brings people back to the game. These inappropriately balanced weapons yep. lead to a fear of missing out moment. Yep, this you is what I just talked about. A considerable amount just to earn these weapons, and you only have a limited amount of time to use them before they get nerfed. <laughs> but that's why it makes so much sense to release these guns the way they have. Yep. The sad part about the whole like new meta every single week is that it just helps Activision give a you know consistent player base. It gives them a consistent player base and opportunity to make more revenue more money from people buying bundles or you know battle pass tiers or actual battle passes anything man to get an advantage over others honestly we can't blame for somebody grinding away their life and or for buying and skipping the tier and the grind and here are his closing thoughts on everything it's a pretty lengthy video but i'm not gonna lie it's worth watching what can we do for starters don't say the line i am begging you i already know what he's about to say line. bro the next one will be better the next one will be better. The next one will be better. It's the wrong attitude to have. That's fact. Call of Duty has had this yearly release schedule for ages now. And when we keep letting them take our 60, now $70 yearly toll, they have... That's facts, bro. Games are getting more expensive, man. You can't just say, oh, I'll just buy the next game. 70 bucks a year is a lot, bro. <laughs> Such little incentive to continue to support the game you paid for. They don't clean up after the party, and they barely keep the lights on. It's yep. The only way a Call of Duty game stays alive is through community support. We're so close that to is Modern Warfare 2. Then All in all, great video by Less Thought. I had a great time watching and researching that video. I really do appreciate it. But for the next story of the day, we have Jay God talking about the Call of Duty drama that happened a couple weeks ago. To give some context, huge Call of Duty drama happened about a week or two ago now. With Call of Duty creators who make content on gameplay and loadouts, were actually complaining about people calling them out and viewers hating on them for two boxing, reverse boosting, and or lying and manipulating them. I made an absolute banger video talking about the entire situation, so go check it out after this video. But basically, J Guy went over a bunch of things. He talked about why he doesn't make videos on other players and creators getting caught cheating. He basically said he wants full blown evidence and proof of that player and person cheating and to be off straight facts and proof rather than feeling that that creator is cheating. I definitely agree because I feel like a lot of the community sees one clip from a creator, player, streamer, or pro player, and off that one clip, they literally call out that player on Twitter, Reddit, or make a YouTube video on them. I feel like the community needs more evidence when calling out creators rather than telling a creator to call out another creator. Jay God also talked about two boxing and how it isn't against TOS, which is a fair point to make. At this point, in reality, people who two box are protected by Activision's TOS and security enforcement policy. And until 2boxing slash smurfing, because that's what it really is, is fully like put into the TOS and security enforcement policy, nothing can be done other than calling out the creators who hide it. That's really it. Another thing that happened that was talked about in this video was the fact that Jay God talked about viewers and people wanting him to do that kind of content where he calls out other creators constantly. And he explained how he's not that kind of person and that he did not want to be stuck in that genre, which is 100% facts. Like I said in previous videos, I don't even make that type of content. I don't make gameplay content and I'm not doing content where I like want to bring people down. That's just not part of my thing because of who I am in real life. I'm not yep. out to wake up every morning and let me tear somebody down. That's not how I feel when it comes to content creation. I also don't want there to be an expectation 
from my viewers for me to make that content. Usually the people are asking, they're not even usually a long time subscriber. Plus viewers get tired and watch that content. Around. That is facts, okay? Listen, 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 listen. J God brings a really good point to this conversation to every Call of Duty content creator who are making videos, either exposing other creators who actually do do it, right? Which is right, but he talks about the fact that viewers get tired of watching that content. And he also goes more into depth of like, not wanting to stay in one kind of genre in Call of Duty. I personally believe if you are a Call of Duty content creator or YouTuber and you make it far into a genre, you never really want to fully stick to it your entire career. You want to kind of branch out at a certain point because a lot of people will get burnt out from watching it. And in most cases, in some cases, you get new viewers that can, you know, keep you growing. But at a certain point, there's going to be no new viewers coming in. If you are a Call of Duty YouTuber and you've make it far into a genre, find new things to kind of keep your grind and love for content going and to keep you posting, okay? This is why I don't do, you know, primarily loadout videos or just call out other creators. I try and fail at new things, but at the same time, I learn and get better at those things. That's my two cents on it. Honestly, to wrap up this story, players and viewers don't go asking other creators who are not involved to get involved and or hate on them for not saying anything about the situation. I learned that lesson the hard way, I'm not gonna lie, when I literally asked people to watch the clip of Hero Doxing Rick, I was asking other creators to watch it, Dexterial and all that stuff. It's it's honestly kind of cringe and I'm, I'm, I'm mad at myself for even doing it. All you could really do is spread the news, but don't spread it to people who are not involved. For the next story of the day, we're gonna be talking about Call of Duty Modern Warfare 4 is potentially getting canceled. Listen, viewers of the call of duty drama alert news channel if you did not know you will now know that call of duty modern warfare 4 has been in development for some time now and apparently for the last couple of months the devs and people behind the game are stuck on what to do for it they are stuck on multiplayer and campaign and the mechanics of the game and because of this activision is once again putting massive pressure on the development team infinity ward to make something out of nothing. This came on my radar once Ink Slasher, a popular Call of Duty YouTuber, actually talked about it. He showed an article about it, and since then, nothing new has popped up about Modern Warfare 4. This was actually leaked by Bob Network UK a couple weeks ago, but it's finally been talked about once again from Ink Slasher, so shout out to him. At this point, they have two years left to actually make the game and publish it, and I truly believe that the devs could not figure out anything, you know, where to go for the mechanics, gameplay, and even where to push the story. So I believe that they ran with whatever the best thought was at that time when Activision gave them more pressure. I'm expecting Modern Warfare 4 to have a lot of red flags by players from the straight fact that Modern Warfare 2 2022, the last game Infinity War developed and made, was absolute bum. And I ain't gonna lie, when this came out initially a couple weeks ago, a lot of players on Reddit and Twitter basically said they will be cautious of buying and playing Modern Warfare 4 because the last Infinity War game was straight trash and i'm kind of with them if modern warfare 4 is trash i'm pulling a jev in 2013 and 2014 and i'm only playing bo6 and older call of duties for the next story of the day somebody some maniac actually unlocked every single camo in both modern warfare 2 2022 and modern warfare 3. you heard that right this guy right here unlocked every camo the caption is finally every camo unlocked and look at this image all unlocked camos 1000 42 out of 1042. So you're telling me this guy went through skill-based matchmaking and all kinds of things to get all 1042 camos unlocked, bro. What, <laughs> what an absolute madman. I'll congratulate and praise you, bro. But I'm deeply questioning how you are doing mentally right now, bro. And now for the next story of the day, Call of Duty players want a map filter feature. So this guy right here made a discussion post on the official Modern Warfare 3 reddit page and asked why is it impossible to get certain maps i have not gotten wasteland in months and haven't gotten underpass in weeks listen i personally don't know why you want to play those maps but but this does bring up a great topic to talk about which is questioning activision and the devs why we don't have a map filter feature i do know that there are players who do enjoy maps like wasteland and underpass and there's also players who have never played old to new maps so why is it there a feature to actually filter out the maps that we want to play and try out i'm actually hoping that we get a feature where we can filter out the maps and game modes we do not want to play man but wrapping up the story we have this guy asking can i interest you in five different versions of shipment 
absolutely hilarious. And for the last story of the day, we're going to be ending it positively, okay? Some guy made an entire oil painting of Black Ops 2 Nuketown 2025. I don't know what made him want to do this and paint this, but listen, it's sick as hell. It's pretty accurate. Look at the detail. Look at look at the detail. Shout out to Cade, man. Okay, it's beautiful, man. Unfortunately, everyone, Ayo Limstar has got to go. If you guys enjoyed, hit that like button. And if you guys are new, hit that subscribe button. And please comment down so I can keep my job. But I'll see you guys next time. Peace.